Tesla Terrace, one of the oldest public housing developments in the nation and the country's first racially integrated public housing development, is about to be changed forever. Yesler Terrace is a tight, vibrant community where many people immigrated from East Africa and Southeast Asia, and everyone is like family because of that. But because of a new redevelopment plan to transform central Seattle, this community will be dispersed and altered in unpredictable ways. Regardless for being around for 75 years, Seattle Housing Authority is giving private investors the opportunity to reimagine Yeslo Terrace with their own intentions prioritized. Currently, Yeslo Terrace consists of low-income residents, while in the master plan written by Seattle Housing Authority, the future of Yeslo Terrace includes guarantees for only 11% of the new development to be set aside for the current residents, while the other 89% or 4,339 units, will be rented at up to market rate. This means the community that has been established for 75 years will be diluted to a mere 10% of the total population. And also, with this redevelopment, concern arises about how local small businesses will survive the redevelopment and how the returning residents will afford the new, more expensive businesses. We've been talking with a couple of local uh, Ethiopian restaurants. Uh, we'd like to get a good restaurant in there, something fun, uh, uh, maybe even a small small store, um, but uh, you know, a good mix. Um, but the most important thing is it's something that activates the corner, uh, that draws people to the neighborhood and to the project, so it makes it kind of exciting. So that's our that's our goal. Uh, well, we're we're marketing it below kind of the typical market rate, so it's going to be very. Uh, we're trying to make it as uh, affordable as possible to get the, attract the best retailers to come in. And so for a restaurant, the large cost for them really is to, to build it out. So, um, Little Saigon Business Association was very, very concerned about the um, Yesler Terrace redevelopment and also had a great deal of concern about the proposed redevelopment the Target was going to do over where Goodwill is. Essentially, um, most of those buildings are most of those businesses are renting um, space in old buildings. The rent in the new structures that are likely to be going up is going to be higher. That's the biggest piece is we can try and keep the rent low to help, uh, help them save on the cost for building. Startup businesses, immigrant owned businesses, what they call the mom and pop stores, um, are endangered. Uh, we're developing um, you know, about, we'll have about 56 uh, what we call workforce housing apartments. So for people that make 80% or less of, of uh, air medium income. So uh, it's intended to really be true workforce housing. So for us, it's about, you know, the civil servants, teachers, nurses, medical professionals working up in the first hill area, making sure that we can offer, uh, you know, high quality housing that's uh, transit oriented. So right on the streetcar line, walkable to their job um, and in a great vibrant neighborhood. We don't have the legal authority to simply pay down somebody's rent in a, in a storefront. There are actually constitutional prohibitions on that in the state of Washington, and uh, the lending of credit for somebody else's private benefit is not allowed in the state. So we think a lot about how, uh, how do we work with property owners. Maybe it's a nonprofit, maybe it's a different, uh, maybe it's a land trust model. Are there ways to create more affordability at the retail level? And no doubt in new construction, if it's privately done, they have to pay off their construction loans. It costs them money to develop that building. And what they have to do is pay back the banks and pay back the private investors that loaned them money in order to build that building. Chances are they have to charge whatever the market will bear for that, uh, for that storefront. And for some of the folks who have been in buildings where the rent has been below market, it's pretty hard to adapt. Some people will be able to adapt, and some people won't. A couple of, just a few years ago, we did a study of where Yeser Terrace residents are shopping now, and that study is on our website, and you're welcome to access it. Um, and it's and it talks about where people are going for groceries, and it's some are shopping right here in the International District, and so we hope that um, by creating better pedestrian access to um, 
to the neighborhood that they'll still be able to continue to shop there. But it also showed that Yeser Terrace residents are shopping um, all over to get their goods, going to the Central District, going to Beacon Hill. So. Well, I don't think there's going to change for me the stores that I go. I go KFC, Chinatown, Costco, Cash and Carry. So steel is in the neighborhood as long as I live here, still close to me. In Hill, so they're already um, traveling to get their groceries, and we have a list of what bus numbers they use. So I think it's important to maintain those public transit. Seattle is growing, and that's inevitable. Private investors are taking advantage of this growth, and our city's leaders are planning our city's future comprehensively. But we, the people, need to ensure that throughout all of this change, all of us, whether low, medium, or high income, small business owners and consumers, have our best interests kept equally in mind. Now the question yes is, whose best interests is really being kept in mind?